Adam Hubbard, and that's uh, originally off uh, the album Try Another Key. Try Another Key, many, many, many moons Which was your very first solo... Very first solo attempt, yes. Yeah, so... Do you remember much about those times? Kind of. Um, all I remember is that I was really anxious in recording stuff, mm. so I kind of recorded a bunch of songs that should have really just been a bunch of demos, but ended up being uh, my first vinyl album. And um, somehow it got on radio and it, and it got on the shelves in music stores and kind of surprised mm. myself because I, I, I personally don't think it's close to what it should have been. You know, if there's any album that I'm kind of like trying and hide under the pillow, that's the album, yep. you know. But <laughs> it's like, uh, it's still part of the but history. That's right, yeah, it's part yeah. of your history, that's yeah. right. Out of your Australian albums, what is your favourite? My favourite Australian, I would have to say The Wind. The Wind. Yes, I, I like think that. The Wind, um, you know, Home Through the Streets, I think, is a, a great record. <laughs> um, but I think by the time I got to, to do The Wind, um, it, it, it was produced better. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was a really well produced album um, with, with, with Greg Williams and, and uh, obviously Dex Audio mm. and with Newmarket. It was a, a big project. It took us a couple of years to really get that album the way we wanted it and I think I just think it uh, it was done the way an album should be done so it's my favorite mm. album that I did in Australia uh, absolutely yeah, that's good and your overseas album since you've been in Chicago Ooh, um, I think I think personally I really I really um, would have to say probably and you put me on the spot I mean if we're going to look at reasons yeah. uh, I love my album Keep Walking uh -huh. because yes. it was the first album I recorded in one of my own studios. Mm -hmm. It was the first album that I actually uh, took the steps and, and took the uh, got some courage out of myself to say I'm going to build a studio mm -hmm. and record an album in my own studio. And it was kind of and it was the first album I did totally by myself uh -huh. without a, a, a co-producer and without you know. Working in Australia mm -hmm. years and years with, with Greg Williams, I got spoilt a little bit. He's, he's yeah. a genius when it comes to as a producer. And uh, so Keep Walking was my first attempt. And at the end of the day, to this very day when I play it, I still think um, it's, a, it's a, a really good record, I think. There's nothing yeah. on there that I don't like. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a couple of great tracks on, on that album, a couple of great tracks I'm on sure, I'm glad you like a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I'm saying they, they stand out. But yeah. they're, they're, the, they're the tracks that you can play without having to play the whole album. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think, the, and, and as I say, it was, it was my first attempt of uh, doing it by myself, mm. engineering, engineering it, producing it, and, and all, the, all the things you do to make a record. And... I got kind of a little obsessed mm. with it, like I, I just I just couldn't keep my hands off yeah. it. So any time we weren't on the road touring or doing shows, I'd be stuck in, in my studio, and it was, and I think that's why I think it's one of my favourites, um, just just for the reason of what it represents mm. to me personally. You know? Well, that particular album, I've, I find I, I put it in the same category as albums like uh, Dark Side of the Moon, uh, where. To get the benefit of the album, you need to play the whole album in its entirety. Oh, you've just given me a high compliment. No, well, that's a, well, it's the same, like, really, when you listen to Pink Floyd, if you don't listen to their albums in their entirety, you miss the point of the you, album, I find. You lose a bit, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I find with, um, with Keep Walking. You know, it's a great album, there's a couple of tracks there that, oh, yeah, you can pick them out and that, but it's best to just sit back, put it from the beginning and just let it flow. Yeah. Through. And there's also a few tracks on there if you don't let mm. it flow through, the tracks don't make any sense. Mm, that's Once right. you put it in its, in, in a, in its entirety, right. it's, uh, it makes sense. Yeah. I must jot that down. We'll have to play that in its entirety. Mm. Uh, we, we played a couple of, uh, you know, we started off uh, a couple of years ago, we played My Shadow okay. on uh, Friday night uh, in its entirety. And just uh, last month we played uh, Without Your Love for Company EP. Which is uh, oh, brilliant. I love that EP. I appreciate your support, yeah. Anthony. No you worries. Know. Well, when the music is good, you can't just let it sit on the shelf, yeah. mate. You've yeah. got to. You're one of those there. guys that support your own. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. And uh, the music, I, I just love your music from, you know, 
and even I, I do. I, I've got. It, it's funny. My uh, partner Georgina, she thinks I'm mad sometimes. <laughs> it's music, music, music. You know. <laughs> and I said, well, that's that's what keeps me going. It's 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 in my blood. It's, uh, and it's one of those things that uh, whenever you're down or and out, you just put on some music and. Wow, you know, it, it, it lifts you. It's part of your life. Yeah, it and I find some, most of your music does that. <laughs> true, and that's true. I'm not just saying that because you're here. That's well, I true. Appreciate Matter that. of fact, I, in the car, I have uh, um, all your CDs. I burn them, put them in the car. So whenever I want to hear Michael, it's just a matter of leaning into the back seat, grabbing a CD, and popping it into the CD player. Well, what a gentleman! Yeah, you are. It's, uh, I do appreciate I'll, it. I'll, I'll, your music is just—I just find it just. It's, it's uplifting. Thank you. And, and like, like you're like you saying with uh, um, hip walking, I was uh, in a bad position a few years back, and uh, that, that album just helped me get through. You, and you can, you can, even between the tracks, you can feel that, you know, that you know, get up and go bit in in the album. And, yeah. and that's, what, that's what lifts you out of the doldrums. You just, you know. Well, the whole idea of that album for me was that was meant to tell a story mm. and uh, I think I think it, it does mm. you know, anyone yeah. that, that really in, into music and understands that side of, mm. of uh, those kind of concept yeah. albums um, I think the story is told mm. no, it's a brilliant album also um, I noticed uh, on a couple of the especially the um, Nobody's Fool album there's uh, quite a few instrumentals on that album what comes first with you? Does the music come, or do you get an idea uh, for the lyrics? Or um, actually, a Nobody's Fool album mm -hmm. was was intended to be an instrumental mm -hmm. album. I said I want to just make a guitar up for a change. So what happened there was, as I was working on it, um, then I kind of thought, well, let's throw one song mm -hmm. in there so we can at least promote the album with a single or something. So, um, Nobody's Fool actually was recorded last, mm -hmm. and, um, and then I thought, well, there's a few other songs I think will fit with that album, so a few vocals songs were put on there, but it was initially intended to be mm -hmm. an instrumental album. Um, so I've still got on the back burner, I still want yeah. to do an instrumental guitar album. Um, I, I attempted on that, didn't quite do it. Um, but hopefully one day I will, because I think an instrumental guitar album, it, it should be in my catalogue, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alright, well we're going to play a track from that album, Nobody's Fool. This is a, a great track and it tells a, a great story. This is a... Where it's supposed to go? And uh, this is called The Tune, The Chords My Daddy... The Chords That My Daddy Taught Me. Michael, tell us a little bit about that song. Well, I think the song says it all. It's um, the first chords were mm. chords that my daddy taught me, and uh, from there it just took off to what I'm doing today. It's just um, without those few chords that he taught me, um, I may never play guitar. I mean, just him having a guitar lying around the house uh, put the bug in me. Yeah. So I, th I just thought it deserved a song. So was was there any any time at all where it was uh, going to be? Michael Charles, the plumber, the electrician. Um, not really, you know. It's like every every dad um, wants their son to be secure, mm. and I, I kept saying I want to be a musician, musician, musician. And uh, my dad said, you know, you, you do need something to fall back on. And um, I did do an apprenticeship as a mm. motor mechanic. Mm -hmm. Now there's something that nobody knows, no. right? So I did do, an, so I am a motor mechanic by trade, you know, I got my trade papers and everything, mm -hmm. and I fortunately never had to fall back on it, so I just kept doing the music. Well, while you're here tonight, there's a nice little... Got a service? <laughs> yeah, just a tune up, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I did do a, a, a course on that, but, you know, it's, it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't my goal to be, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a, a motor mechanic, my goal was to play music. I just stuck with it, Anthony. You know, yeah. As you know, I just stuck with it. And in in the early early days, I'm I'm sure uh, you would have gone and done gigs, and you would have thought, "What am I here because the crowds weren't there?" Or um, that yeah. that new single, "My Why Am I Here," is a great mm. title. Yeah, because mm. I said that to myself many times. Right. Why am I here? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you. you 
you know, I think as all artists, we, we've done gigs where we, we set up and we're ready to, to rock and roll and ready to give it all you got and there's uh, three people staring at you. I mm -hmm. think we've all done that. Yeah. Um, that's just part of the part of the growing as, as an artist. It's just part of, without that, um, you're really not on, on track. I think you need to go through that to understand what those audiences that eventually come out and see who they really are and why they're there. And uh, I really don't know any anyone that's probably never gone through that. If they if they haven't, good luck to them. them, them right. Everyone I know have gone through that, you know. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter where what stage your career is in. You, you're always going to have an odd night where there's a lot of reasons, especially, you know, being on the road like I am, um, you, you, you travel 13, 14, 15 hours in, in, in the middle of a blizzard, uh, you're there because you've, you're contracted to be mm -hmm. there, but, you know, there's a blizzard outside, I mean, who the hell is going to come out and see you play? And there you are again, playing to about 20 people, people. you know. And occasion that's going to happen, but you know this shouldn't discourage you. It's just, it's life. So what 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 is the, the secret of Michael Shaw? What puts him on stage? Is it the music? Is it the people coming out to see you? It's it, it's got to be the passion to play. Um, I've I've never I've never gone on on, on to any stage thinking, oh man, if there's nobody there, I'm, oh, I can't be, no, n never. And in the early days in Australia, you've been at my shows yeah. where, and I, I just get up and I, and I just close my eyes mm. and do what I'm supposed to be doing because I truly believe if, if there's one person in that audience, you better give it all you've got yeah. because that one person could bring another dozen people next time. So. You don't want to give yourself a bad name mm -hmm. because you've just had a bad night. And I, I, I've never done that. Well, I remember the very first time I saw you down at the uh, Red House. It was uh, about July 89, somewhere no, around about it was there. Earlier than that, that yeah. yeah. Maybe. A couple of years yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, right. A of years um, earlier. Anyway, uh, walking in, there was only a dozen, not even that, half a dozen people yeah. in the place. And, uh, oh, yeah. So up at the bar, get me bourbon and coke, sit down, the band's ready to begin. And from that opening chord, to me, it sounded like you were playing in front of a hundred, a thousand people. You put your heart and soul in the whole performance, and that just that just uh, won me over. I thought this guy, this guy's going to go places. So walking out that night, I finished up buying the two albums that you had, the EP, even the cassettes, <laughs> so I can listen to your music on the way home. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, um, there you go. That's what yeah. I was trying to yeah. say. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's pointless to get discouraged. Mm. I mean, um, if you're going to be, if you're going to choose to do this as, as a career and make it your main job in life, um, getting discouraged is the wrong thing because it can't always be perfect. It's perfect, that's right. You know, what, what in life is mm. perfect all that's the time? Right. I haven't, haven't figured that one out mm. myself, so... Just cruise, you know, just do your thing. And that's, that's a good thing that uh, I, I see in you. You're not out there to get that number one hit record. No. You're out there because you love your music and it shows in the way you play your music. And each individual album has got that own special stamp on it. It's not the same music like a lot of artists. You, they hit on something. Status Quo, one of the biggest examples. <laughs> You know, three chords, and for what forty years they've played the same three chords. Well, it's worked for them. <laughs> but it's worked for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've, I've yeah. never, I've never had any intention to um, record something and mm. to say this song is the one I wanted to be a hit. I've, mm. I've always recorded and every song and, and um, written every song because I, I just want to do it. But th there's no other motive. Mm. There's, 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 I just want to do it. And I've always said, yeah, if people like it, great. If they don't, yeah. they just don't come back and that, see me that's again. It. You know, yeah. and uh, that's been my attitude. But um, it, it's working fine. You know, that's just good. Um, you know, just moving to the states and it broadening you know, make make your whole horizon. Yeah. Take it somewhere else. Um, really um, was. 
took a lot of courage to do for me. Would have been an eye opener compared yeah. to being here in Australia, going over there. And yeah, because I mean, when I got there, here I am in the middle of all these great musicians, mm -hmm. you know, and all at once I'm turning my head around and there's all these faces that I knew and wow, they're the faces on covers mm. of records, you know, there they are right in front of you. And uh, what an experience. And then all, you know, as time passes, you just become part of that, that group so, of yeah. people, that scene. And sticking with it, but when I say it took courage was, when I first started meeting up with these great artists, I'm thinking, thinking to myself, what the hell am I doing? Who am I? You know, well, I don't belong. The little fish in a big pond. Yeah, yeah, that's how I felt. So the courage that I had to find was, was to be able to say to myself, just do what you do, and and hopefully you'll fit in. And and yeah, it didn't take long. I guess I was fitting in, and uh, it's part of the scene out there now, and it's great. You know, it's great to be part of that scene. Well. Talking about doing what you're doing, you brought your guitar in. So, how about a tune, Michael? We got the guitar here. Yes. This is a guitar I found uh, in um, my sister's closet. Talking about this is sister. <laughs> so, let's do something. Um, yeah. I'm sure you recognise this song. I'm, I'm sure. If I could sing my song.
something I had to do I left the place I love I left the people to set them free Oh yeah From me Another time and place How did it get so far? Thanks, Anthony. And that's um, from. You should know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to connect it. Connect it. That's right. <laughs> Another time. Yeah. And uh, that's that's why uh, I didn't get it at first because uh, it's one of those. It's not an album that I don't play. It yeah. Often enough, I think. It's off the. It's the the weird song off a hip hop album. Album. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the last track of the album. The last track of the album. Uh, makes the album, I think. Uh, I, <laughs> I had to put something on there that would uh, but, uh, represent me the way right, you are. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Any chance of doing something like that again? Not necessary hip hop. No, no, I don't think so. That was done, and uh, I'm proud of the album. It was great working with mm -hmm. Majesty and all that. But you know, that's it's done. It's gone. It's, it's always, oh, you know me. I'm always yeah. looking for something Nothing new, new yeah. different, yeah. and. Uh, Keep, keep it exciting, you know. I've got to keep it exciting for me too. You know? Well, if you ever need a triangle play, I can play a good triangle. <laughs> 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 uh, no, that, that was brilliant. And uh, with, um, like, the uh, last time uh, you were here uh, was around the time that had been released by that time. Yeah, And you were, in, you were into the third undercover single, I think. By that time. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah it was what like, two years ago, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah pretty close. Cool. Yeah, and Just uh, two years. And uh, out of the undercover series, I think the next one was the the outstanding single out of the before that was released, and that was uh, Hey Joe. Hey Joe. Yeah. So tell well, us a story about Hey Joe. Well, Hey Joe is a, is a song that I had have been playing. Um, you know, for years and years mm -hmm. and years, you know, I was actually playing that song, I believe, before I moved to the States, even in, in Australia. It's just one of those songs that I enjoyed playing. It's normally like an end of the night song, you know, it wasn't a main song of the show, but it was a song that I enjoyed playing. So I thought when we did the Under the Covers, uh, what I was trying to do with that whole series was pick songs that um, I knew that they were Classics. Mm -hmm. There's some classic songs that people like and, and songs that, that I had been playing. I didn't yeah. just pick songs that I thought people would like. I actually picked the cover, the few covers, because I don't do a lot of covers, mm -hmm. so the few covers. I said, so let's record these covers that I actually play on stage. Like I just throw them in randomly yeah. or at the end of a show or an, an encore mm -hmm. or something like that. And that's where these songs come from. So Hey Joe was, a, was an obvious song. It was a song I've been playing for years and years. But the story behind that is when we, re, we started recording it in the studio, I asked my assistant Jane to just get the lyrics off the computer because I said, just in case there's something not mm -hmm. right that I've been thinking through the years, you do tend to change <laughs> things, you know. So I said, mate, just give me that lyric sheet off, off the internet mm -hmm. so I'll make sure I sing the right lyrics. And she came down about 15, 20 minutes later, and we are just recording the, 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 the rhythm tracks, mm -hmm. drums and bass, and, and she brings these lyrics out, so I thought I was humming the lyrics to the tracks we just recorded. I said, whoa, I don't know these words. Um, so she come down with the lyrics, the original lyrics are actually written for that song. Um, and what happened is when Jimi Hendrix recorded it, he changed the lyrics. He didn't sing the original lyrics. So I thought, well, this is cool, but the only problem is we're going to have to record the whole song again yeah. because I didn't record <laughs> enough. Uh, I didn't record enough bars in, in the vocal line. There was more lines to be sung. Yeah. So we re-recorded the song again. 
And I thought, well, okay, we've got that, that's great. And then a couple of nights later, I went down to do the vocal lines and I thought to myself, how do I sing this thing? I had no idea all these extra words, what yeah. the melodies were, so I kind of guessed it. And that's the result of that. I mean, it's probably the obvious thing you notice right away. There's yeah. different words, um, there's more lyric to it. And I'm just hoping that I did the song justice and I sang it the way the writer intended it to be sung, I hope. Well, but that's my version. Well, there. I reckon you've done it justice, because I reckon it's the best out of the undercover series. And uh, one thing that I, I noticed, though, when you started off, of course, with uh, After Midnight, and then Going Down, Crosscut Saw, then Hey Joe, but I, f I felt myself that each recording was sort of like better than the last. You, you, you're taking a walk along a stairway, I felt. Yeah, it's just, I think that's the same with, with anything you do. I mean, as you, you know, being a songwriter and always recording my own albums with my own songs, and, I, and all at once here I am in this, decided to do this series of singles, it was strange to me to actually be in the studio recording songs that I didn't write. It was very strange. Yeah. And, and a little bit nerve-wracking because I hope I can do justice to these songs. It's not something I was familiar with or something I was comfortable doing. It, it was, I thought I'd be okay, but bringing it into the studio is nothing like jamming mm. it live. live yeah. You know, you sing a wrong lyric mm. here, or you leave a whole verse yeah. out, who cares, yeah, it's the yeah. end of the night, right, yeah. let's jam on the guitar and, and let's have a party. But you know, in the studio you've got to polish it up. So I thought, well I just hope it works. But everyone has been... Um, I haven't heard any bad reports on it, so well, I guess... Well, what I, what I liked about it, uh, those singles, were that you can hear the Michael Charles in those songs, even though you, you go back and you remember hearing Eric Clapton and uh, Jimi Hendrix and all that singing those songs, but there's that Michael Charles stamp on each, each one. So you, you're singing a great cover, but you're putting your stamp on it. You're not trying to be an Eric Clapton or... And that, that's oh, what makes them so good, I think. No chance. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't even attempt. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. even dare mm. trying to be these guys because they're, they're so good at what yeah, they do. They're in their league and of their own, aren't they? They're in yeah. the league of their own. Yeah, yeah you don't want to try and, no. and be that. You've, I think the secret in this business is be yourself anyway. Mm. That's, that's yeah. the way I feel. So even if you do a cover, you should do it, I like your wording, yeah. with yeah. your own stamp. Brand. I yeah. think it's yeah. important. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a listen to uh, Hey Joe. This is uh, from the Under the Cover series, Disc 4. <laughs> 